blur it up your way. Yeah. I forget a name now, her address, but I've got it wrote down. And uh, she was at that last show you did with Fury's dad. Oh, really? But she didn't know it was you. Oh, never in the world. Yeah, because I sent her a letter and I said, uh, uh, she told me in her letter, I've just been to a great night and uh, uh, Tyson Fury's dad, it was brilliant, blah, blah, blah. And I wrote back to her and I said, that was my mate who put that on, <laughs> Stevie Raff. <laughs> and she wrote back, she said, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> what a small world. That's what I say, there's, there's 58 million people in this fucking world, in our world. And she was sitting there. <laughs> most most of us so, most of us can't go from place to place, and then she she she, she, said, she said it was brilliant, you know. Oh, he was brilliant, mate. Honestly, he was classy. He's your kind of person and my kind of person. He's a good man, mate. Very down to earth, honest speaker. Tells it how it is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, uh, and he was he's been a right tough boy in his day, hasn't he? Oh yeah, there's no doubt about that. I mean, he's uh, you know, and he produced he produced the, the toughest boy on the planet at the minute as well. <laughs> Hey, you know uh, the other geezer, Paddy, the, the one that was on the telly and all that? Yeah, Paddy Doherty. You do know he's a grass, don't you? Ah, I've seen that, yeah, I've seen it. I mean, he got... Well, it's not a, not a point of seeing it. He, he, he actually made statements and he went to fucking court in the witness box, you know, as, as a prosecution witness. I saw that, yeah. He had a big um, he had a big fallout with a couple of other traveller kids, didn't That's he? It. That's, That's it. That's right, yeah. But the thing is, he went... Uh, until that happened, I had so much... Respect for him, you know. He disappeared after that. He's he's never really been seen. I mean, he was doing social media. He was doing all the yeah. TV appearances. Any, any man to step in that fucking witness box for the prosecution, it, it, to me, just don't fucking happen, mate. No, it's it's daft, isn't it, really? It you know, is. uh, we all do silly things. We all fuck up. You know, especially when your family are concerned, but you don't go down that road, mate. You sort it out yourselves. Exactly, mate. Exactly. Exactly. Fuck sake. Crazy, isn't it? How I see it, all his life, he, he, he's been a fucking good man, a tough man. He's fought his way to the top, and he fucking does a thing like that. Crazy, isn't it? Crazy. I don't understand it, mate. I no. Don't understand it. I don't under you, you never understand people, really, do you? And I've always said, Steve, I've always said this and always will. You're not, you, you don't become a grass, you, you're born a grass, mate. Yeah, I think you're right, mate. I think you're right. You don't wake up in the morning when you're 40 years old or 50 years old or whatever and think, hmm, I think I'll be a grass today. It don't work like that. No, you, you're born that way, aren't you? You're born it, mate. You're weak. You're fucking weak. It's like a lot of a cray firm. They was all happy when they was having parties and... All that fucking stuff. But as soon as the heat turned up, most of them melted. Yeah, you're right, man. You're right. It's true, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's the books are full of them, you know what I mean? You, you know the situation, and and you can go and see the paperwork now. It's all there in, in the British Library and stuff, and, you know, you, know. you can pop down and see who made the statements, and even know, those even those who stood by them. You, you, you don't believe that, it, but they did. Even those who stood by them then tried to sell them sell them out when they when they got the conviction. Yeah, well, as soon as they got their sentences, they started to blame Ron for everything to get to get their appeal. If there's one person alive or dead who you would have loved to interview, who would it be? Oh, now that's a great question. Well, I'm alive or dead. I've got to say, I'd like to. I would, from a criminal point of view. Um, yeah. Although I know him and I do speak to him, I would like to interview Kenny Noy. I would like to do Kenny's book. Um, yeah, mate. Well, I've, well, I do speak to him. I do speak to him. But um, yeah, he's a bit special, isn't he? Yeah, I'd like to do his book and I'd like to do John Sears's book, but he's very reluctant to do a book at this moment in time. So those two people, yeah. But from a from a historical point of view, I would love to have met Winston Churchill. Bloody oh, top eight. We'd all be talking fucking German, mate, if it weren't for him. Hey, do you know they was on the back pulling his statue down and all? Yeah, ridiculous, man. Ridiculous. Cheeky bastards. Who would you like to meet then, Charlie? Ah, uh, it'd have to be Rocky Marciano. Ah, uh, good shout. Good shout. Ah, uh, Rocky Marciano, just to sit down, have a nice fucking meal with him, a nice drink, and hear all the stories. Oh, it was a good film on the other night. 
uh, Raging Bull. Oh, that's, but, uh, that's a classic, that, isn't it? What a bloody film that was. They don't make them like that anymore. Oh, even that Joe Petchy was in it, you know. Yeah, he, he, all, the, all the old boys back together kind of thing when, when they did Goodfellas and that. Uh, Taxi Driver's another good film. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to uh, eat the twins uh, at Rocky Marciano over here, you know. Yeah, they, they had Marciano, they had Graziano, they had Joe Louis in Newcastle. They had uh, Sonny Liston. Sonny Liston in Newcastle. I've got a picture of Sonny Liston riding through Newcastle on a white horse. Hey, that's worth a few quid, isn't it? Ah, it was just um just that was that was on one of the twins' visits and uh, I went along to Middlesbrough University, they have all the archive of all the film footage of uh, of Joe Louis' visit to uh, Newcastle. And yeah. just at the end in the Dolce Vita Club, uh, the camera pans onto the audience and you see Ronnie Cray sitting in the audience clapping. You're joking. Yeah, you can't get it. I could I would have to buy the footage. It would be three it's three hundred quid three hundred quid a second to buy the footage. Um but it's it's amazing to see Ronnie in Newcastle, you know, actually live clapping. He was you know? all up with his suit and everything. He was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only because I knew where he was sitting. Oh he was. He was he was a dapper I've done. Got, I've, got, I've got two sex. Who's that? No. No. Alright, mate. Yeah, sorry, go on, Steve. It's not often that you get interrupted by getting a knock at the door. <laughs> Kangaroo at the door, he asked if I've got me weekly report or something. Brilliant. I think that's hilarious. You getting you getting interrupted, it would be me, the postman at the door or something. I'm doing I'm doing a podcast, Charlie, and instead it's you getting a knock at the door. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the classic, mate. It was? Classic. Yeah, God. <laughs>